Welcome to the Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Free-flowing talk with a charismatic, down-to-earth host. Join Dean as he interviews and chats freely with his guests, ranging from superstar athletes to politicians, industry titans, and everyday folk with fascinating life stories. Dean educates, entertains, and most of all, touches people's lives. You're listening to the Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dean Blackman Show. This is your host, Dean. My special featured guest today is Robert Fortier, whose nickname is Bobby Dog. Bobby Dog is a visionary, entrepreneur, accomplished protector of the community, now retired from the New York City Police Department. Bobby's the recipient of medals for integrity, excellent police duty, and teamwork. Robert continues to share his creative and positive personality through Team Dog, receiving special recognition for tending to the needs of our youth of United States Congress, recognized as an everyday hero for his work and mentoring today's youth. Thank you for being with us here on the Dean Blackman Show, Bobby. Well, Dean, thanks for having me on the show. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. You're very welcome. Very welcome. And uh, your story is just, uh, as I always say, incredible and remarkable and inspirational. Anyone that uh, gives their life to today's children and today's youth. So it's uh, it's really incredible what you what you do today. Well, thank you so much. Um, before we before we get into a lot of discussion here on the show. Uh, I know that uh, my guest last week, Myra Goldick, we did a great show uh, last week with her. And uh, I was introduced to Myra through her son-in-law, uh, Matt, from the famous Touch of Class car wash there in Smithtown. Oh, and- yes, the Touch of Class car wash. <laughs> I'll tell you, the boys at the Touch of Class have been very supportive of Team Dog and what I've done for, I've got to say, about 20 plus years. Very good guys, really good. Great guys. guys, Matt, and that's how you and I, uh, you and I, came together as well. So, uh, before we get started, I know that uh, here we are in October, and it is uh, the the Fall Classic, the World Series, and just uh, a legendary si- series with the Chicago Cubs in Cleveland. And I know that you are a huge, huge baseball fan, like I am. Uh, sports fan and uh what do you think uh what do you think of the two teams in the series uh the indians and the cubs and what do you think uh, after uh, after two games i'll tell you what after two games it is you know proving to be one of the best world series that you could possibly see in your lifetime i think that both teams are we finally have it right you know i believe anyway the two best teams for this year are playing against each other and it makes for an amazing amazing world series I mean, it's just amazing that uh, last year you had uh, LeBron James and uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers just won the NBA championship, just a classic uh, championship against the Golden State Warriors, Stephen Curry. And uh, here we have a chance that uh, a city like Cleveland that hasn't uh, won a World Series in a very long time, that uh, they have a chance to have back-to-back sport teams championships in a city. That that is always amazing when that happens, and you know it it happens often when uh, one sport team wins a championship, uh, the next sport follows up and does the same thing. Uh, I, th- I think it's karma, you know. So uh, just a great World Series, and I, I know that uh, we'll get into more a little bit of your baseball life, uh, and I think it's important that we start. You know, it's always very special uh, for me uh, personally that here in the Three Village community of uh, the North Shore of Long Island that uh, I get to have guests that uh, have grown up out here on the island and just doing some great things in their life. It's really special uh, for for me to have you here in the studio. And I think you grew up in a a large family that I grew up, like I grew up in. Uh, I think your family was larger. And uh, I think uh, I'd like you to go back uh, a little bit in the history. I think you grew up in Kings Park and talk about your uh, your growing up uh, and your family. Well, you're right. I did. I grew up in Kings Park and I'm a graduate of Kings Park High School. And uh, it was a cool little town to grow up in. 
because uh, back in our day, well, I have four brothers, three sisters. So uh, we learned how to work together as a team at a very young age. You know, mom and dad were very uh, supportive of everything that we wanted to do. But their number one focus was that we were respectful to ourselves and others and that we would be team players in everything that we did. So if we did not get along as brothers and sisters, we were not allowed to go out and make friends. Wow, what a family. <laughs> I mean, uh, four brothers and three sisters. Your parents were pretty busy back in those days. They were they were busy. You know, dad worked two jobs and mom was home, but she, I'll tell you what, her job was probably the toughest job, uh, you know, raising eight children. Where did you fall uh, in, in the uh, line of uh, uh, siblings? I am the oldest boy and wow. I have uh, two older sisters, a younger sister and four younger brothers. Wow. Wow. It's a big family. It was a fun family. We really had a lot of, you know, we fought like uh, every family does, siblings do. But at the end of the day, we, you know, loved each other through and through. And I think that was the most important part of, you know, life. And the sister, what was it like getting getting along with uh, three three sisters? The sisters were great. Actually, you know, it'd be pretty funny. I, you just, you know, made me think about when I was young, my sisters actually taught me to dance, you know. So, uh, I Back in my day, uh, being a male and dancing was not like the coolest thing to be doing. But my sisters had me out there dancing and I danced and I had a great time dancing. Wow. Wow. What was, you know, I, I remember I'm one of five brothers. I have two sets of twin older brothers. Uh, and wow. then uh, my parents uh, had me. I mean, two sets of twins and then uh, me, the single one. Um, I know what it was like being around the dinner table. What was it like in your household uh, with so many children? I'll tell you what, I, I miss, I see today because what I do today, I talk to kids today a lot and they don't have that around the dinner table meeting that we had when we were young, not, not too many, you know. Um, it was very important that all the kids sat down and ate dinner together. You know, mom would serve everyone at the same time, you'd wait and everybody would eat. And then while you're eating, you would discuss what happened during the day. So, you know, everybody had their little thing that happened during the day and mom and dad would catch up on the day's events. And then when we were done eating, we'd all have to a uh, chore, you know, one would have to clear the table, one would have to sweep the floor, do the dishes. You know, we didn't have a dishwasher back then. So I, I believe that was me who did most of the dishwashing back then. And when we were done with our chores, then we could go out and play. Well, I remember uh, growing up in Freeport, uh, my brothers and I, I, I know I've mentioned this before, but uh, you know what I don't see in, uh, uh, in today's uh, children, like uh, we did in our generation, is uh, that I remember, you know, just outside our homes, whether it be with a tennis racket, we would play tennis racket games with uh, with a ball in the streets, or we'd be in our garages uh, and play stickball. Um, you don't you don't see that with uh, you don't see that going on in neighborhoods and and kids like what we used to do. I assume you you did that with so many brothers and sisters. I'm I'm sure there was quite a bit of activity like that going on in your neighborhood. You know, I, I definitely miss the old days of, you know, like we knew everybody. The whole neighborhood knew each other. All the kids knew each other. The parents knew each other. Actually, the parents watched out for all the kids. And many times if they saw something going on, they would let your parent know, hey, you know, I saw this, I saw that, keep an eye on this, keep an eye on that. And everybody really just looked out for each other, you know, kind of had each other's back. And we played ball and we put, you know, whatever game it was, we had, I don't know, 10, 15 kids in the neighborhood when we were done with our homework, we we're out there playing ball or whatever it was we were doing as a group, like a big giant group. I don't see that these days. Well, no more, no more. Listen, there's a lot to talk about and it's really, uh, really special uh, when I can have someone here on the show that is uh, spending every minute of their day with today's youth and with children and, and doing everything you can for them. I'm going to throw a lot at you right now, and uh, if you could just try to bring me through in the audience, conceptualize everything that happened after uh, after growing up in Kings Park, your family, but I'd like you to uh, take the audience through your journey of Bobby Fortier becoming this Bobby Dog, D-A-W-G, from athlete great athlete growing up to a police officer in new york city to a travel softball team named after your team dog shirt creations turning an animated cartoon idea into children's books 
and then elementary school presentations about the importance of family, friendship, teamwork, and what an everyday hero is, and why you should be one to the family and friends in your life. So that's a lot I, 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 I threw at you, but I think you got to go back right there. You know how this uh, name Robert Fortier went to, you know, growing up. I know there were nicknames thrown at you and by friends and by family. I think you got to really start fresh from there. How this Bobby dog came about and uh, and then obviously um, police officer uh on to what you do today. Uh, I, I will start by saying that my mom and dad were very hands-on in everything that we did. And they taught us the importance of being respectful. And that was the foundation of my mom and dad's character. So it was no, you know, it wasn't a surprise that it became the foundation for my entire family, you know, to be respectful and to realize that you need to be respectful of others. I mean, you know, remember that respect your elders, respect authority. Yes. Uh, you don't hear a lot of that these days. There's so much going on. But when I was growing up, that was one of the most important things that my parents modeled. And if you'll notice, I say modeled because they showed this to us every day. I'm sure my mother down in Delray Beach, Florida is listening to you right now, Bobby, that she's listening to this show because the very first show that uh, on the Dean Blackman show was my 89 year old mother. <laughs> and uh, it was appropriate. And she echoed on that show. If anyone hasn't heard it, they could go to uh, YouTube, the Dean Blackman show on YouTube. They could go uh, to iTunes and uh, hear Gene Blackman. But you're, she's, she's probably uh, really getting some enjoyment out of this, hearing about your family and growing up. Because one thing she echoed on that show is she wishes today's generation, that she wishes that families would show more love and do you know, embrace and that there would be more of what you are saying right now. So go ahead. Well, uh, first I'll give a big shout out to mom Blackman and say she must be proud of uh, Dean <laughs> for what he does, you know, bringing people into his studio and, and showing light, especially on here on Long Island. Bobby proud. <laughs> she doesn't stop for one minute telling everybody in Florida that her son Dean's got a radio show and she's one of the star's guests on the show. She doesn't stop plugging it down there. Well, without mom, there is no and, you. And, <laughs> and she's one of my favorite guests so far. All the letters and emails I'm getting, people are asking me to have her every week on. Well, that, that is awesome. But today's show is not about my mom. It's about <laughs> uh, Robert Fortier, Bobby Dork. So go ahead about that, that family history still. Well, so I'll just simply start by telling you, I, I was a real big sports nut. I mean, I loved all sports, but I had a real passion for the game of baseball. And whenever I wasn't doing anything, what I wanted to do was play that game. And we used to get the kids together around the neighborhood, and we would play every second that we could. And, of course, playing organized sports throughout my childhood, you know, Every season, looking forward to getting on the ball field, putting on a uniform. To me, when I put on that baseball uniform, I mean, I became a major league ball player, of course, in my mind. And that's the dream of many, many kids, uh, you know, growing up is to be a professional athlete in, in many sports. But for me, it was baseball. So I really worked hard at trying to be a good ball player. Now, when you watch the major league players, these athletes are amazing. They can do such amazing skill levels, you know, plays, able to dive for balls and just, I would say, extraordinary players, you know. And so I would try to emulate those. And, you know, on the ball field, I would do that. I would be diving. And many of my friends would say, you know, you would dive when you didn't have to. But, yes, you would dive because I'm making believe I'm this major league baseball player because that's really what I wanted to be. So in my effort and sometimes being what people term to being a bit of a show off, you know, I would make these crazy plays and people started to call me. What's the term for somebody who's a show off? Now, the funny part about this, I'll tell you, is the term they use is somebody who is a show-off, not really a team player, and thinks that they're better than everybody else. And that person they usually call is a hot dog. <laughs> and because that my name was Bobby, they were calling me Bobby Hot Dog. Now, I was a bit of a show-off, so I have to take, you know, I have to take ownership of that. But you know, my family was not happy that people were making fun of me. And when we talked about it, they actually brought it to my attention one day and they were saying, you know, I don't really like people calling you Bobby Hot Dog. 
you know, and I thought about it. And, you know, when I do my school program with children, you know, the students in schools, this is what I talk about. I share this with them that I was being made fun of, actually being made fun of. And then, I, you know, I'll ask the children, if you were to be made fun of, how would that make you feel? So there would be plenty of different answers that they get, but they would run the gamut of emotions. You know, mad, sad, angry. Anyway, so with my family, when they told me that, I was upset. Look, my whole family is upset because people are making fun of me. So, Bobby, before still staying on this, you keep talking about that you always, you know, you loved baseball. Um, you played baseball well. Why didn't you continue to follow your dream? Oh, that, you know, that's a and, good question. And, and why didn't you follow your dream to be a baseball player? You know, many things happen during your life and uh, roadblocks that happen and they put you off in different direction. And uh, growing up, as much as I wanted to be, uh, you know, this major league baseball player, you, you need to have a certain set of skills to be able to be a major league baseball player. You can't just want to be one. And although I worked hard to be one and I was pretty skilled at many different things, you know, I was never, I don't feel I never ever had the skill to be everything you need because there's many tools you need. You hear them talk about tools for a player. You may be a great hitter, but if you can't catch and throw a ball, where are you going to be? Right. You may be a great fielder, but if you can't hit a ball, where are you going to be? Wow. You're not wow. going to be on the ball field. So although I loved it and I was pretty good at it, I was, I don't believe I was ever good enough to be a major league baseball player. But what stopped me was not that thought that I was going to keep trying to be one, but was in high school, I didn't make the varsity a baseball team. And I did what most athletes do. Well, if I'm not going to do what I love to do, I guess I'll go get a job. Okay. Who's your, who's your favorite baseball team growing up? Uh, my favorite baseball team is the New York Yankees. And I am a baseball fan. I love the game of baseball and I happen to love the Yankees. But being in the world that I live in and the respect world that I live in, I can respect every team. I do not hate any team. And I love to watch any team play the game. So you can imagine that the World Series... The Cubs against Cleveland. I'm loving it. I'm watching it every night. I can't wait. It's a great. It's a great story. You know, uh, myself being a, a baseball fan, uh, and since you're such a huge baseball fan, uh, I grew up. Uh, I grew up being a New York Met fan when I was a kid, and uh, I've said on a couple of shows that uh, I'll never forget 1969. If you remember, uh, well, the World Series was was only played during the day. There were no night games in '69. And uh, Mets were in the World Series against the great, great favored Baltimore Orioles. And I'll never forget, I said, I was such a loyal Met fan, so big back then. You know, I was born in 57, here's 69. How do I stay home for uh, the World Series? I did everything possible to bring on a fever. <laughs> and and, and convince, convince my mother to let me stay home to watch the New York Mets uh, in that World Series. I mean, I grew up, uh, Tom Seaver was so much my idol that if he would ever lose uh, a baseball game that he pitched, uh, I would cry. I got so upset with it. I was so in love with the Mets growing up. But along the way, uh, as my son uh, Jared was growing up, he was a huge, huge, avid uh, New York Yankee fan. So uh, my allegiance began, you know, as uh, to double up and, and be a Yankee fan as well. And then uh, through, uh, through my Twin Lab Days business that a lot of our nutritional products uh, were consumed and used by many people, consumers throughout the world and especially athletes. And that's when, when you talk about uh, the, having all the tools of hitting, running, speed, and catching a very good friend of mine over the last 20 years that's going to be a guest on the show, Barry Bonds, um, who I consider one of the greatest baseball players, if not the greatest of all time. So, um, you know, being a fan of, uh, of the game, it's, uh, it's just remarkable what, uh, what's going on as far as, uh, as far as baseball. Oh, yeah. And, and Barry Bonds is definitely one of the best players to ever play the game. There's no doubt about that. So uh, the Mets are great. And uh, so base. So obviously, uh, baseball player never happened. Yes, baseball player never happened. But I will say that uh, when I was done with high school, I started to play the game of softball. And I can tell you that through the game of softball, I lived my dream of being a professional athlete. Hmm. And I played that game two, three times a week and every weekend. And I started a tournament team. 
that went around the country and played softball. Okay, so if I'm correct, after after that, uh, as the years went on, uh, eventually became a New York City uh, police officer for about 10 years. And then uh, after that, I think there was an injury, and uh, it was time to move on from being a police officer. Uh, yeah, when I retired from the NYPD, um, I really enjoyed my interaction with people on the street and um, you know, being a part of someone's day every day. So as Team Dog grew from just the t-shirt design and uh, my dog character that I created, Bobby Dog, um, it grew into a children's book series and a school program where I would go in and talk to the kids and I would just share my life story, which was my pathway from what we're talking about, being a young kid in a big family, growing up loving sports and what you learn playing sports, I think is uh, very much needed for your day-to-day -day life. If you, very important. You can learn very to important. be a team player and the importance of working together to get something accomplished. You can get a lot more accomplished when you do it together as a team. If it's not, if, 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 a, chill, if a child's choice is not, uh, not a sport, if it's not a sport, it's, it's good for uh, a child to get involved with something. And whatever they get involved in, it's still going to, cool. they'll need teamwork to get things done. Yes. Nobody does anything alone. That's part of what I talk about when I talk. Okay, so how, how, did, how did this all come about once again uh, with uh, the, whole, the whole dog creation? <laughs> okay, well... At, when I was a New York City police officer, and my friend, a lot of my friends became New York City police officers at the same time, and they continued to call me hot dog. So while I was on the police department and walking the streets in New York, I would come to the corner where the schools are, and the, and the students would be out playing, and they would hear my fellow uh, officers call me, hey, hot dog, Bobby dog, Bobby hot dog this, Bobby hot dog that, and they started to refer to me as officer dog. So... When they started to call me Officer Dog, it it like it hit me. I want I, I would love to make a cartoon dog character, and call him Bobby Dog, and give him my love for sports and you know that whole personality of meeting people and you know being a team player coming from a large family. So I created the very first dog character, Bobby Dog, from my days as a New York City police officer. Wow, wow. You know, I didn't mention earlier, as you get more into this, uh, I wanted to ask you, your lovely wife, uh, Lori, and uh, your two children, Robbie and Katie, are they big baseball fans? Oh, we, we are a big baseball family. You know, Lori is a player herself. Um, she plays softball, and we actually had the opportunity to play together when we first got together, and that was one of the things that helped bond, you know, our love for each other was playing that game because we both loved it so much. I think I think she actually loves it more than me at this point. You know, she will not let me not play. <laughs> Did I, you ever hear that before? I, never, I, <laughs> never, I, never, I never heard that before. <laughs> So, and my daughter played softball, uh, you know, growing up, she was a softball and volleyball player and she actually had the passion for volleyball, but she was very good with softball and we traveled around together. Well, she first, she traveled watching me play the game and sharing those experiences with me. And then I got to travel and watch her play the game. And I got to share that experience watching her. You know, you've got some really interesting, uh, accomplishments and highlights. You, you know, softball world series champion. You were selected to the all-world team. You were recognized by Long Island's Newsday as an everyday hero. You were inducted into the KPHS Hall of Fame for creating Team Dog and mentoring youth. You were inducted into the USSA, United States Specialty Sports Association, New York State Hall of Fame three times as a player, sponsor, and team of distinction. Wow. <laughs> that, <laughs> I mean, where do you, where do you start? I mean, where do you start on that? Pretty, you, you very impressive. Big, you see that big smile on my face? It's a very, just, very big smile. I, I am, I am proud to be a part of all those organizations and to be recognized by those organizations. And I can tell you right away, you don't get there without people helping you get there. I was fortunate to play with a team that was full of superstars, but nobody had the ego of superstars. And that's what makes a team successful. Wow, wow. Listen, let's, let's once again, let's go back to, it's, you're in the schools today. Let's, let's go back to, you know, 
once again the creation point and and how many years and what exactly you're doing in the school systems throughout Long Island right now and uh, just bring the audience right through that right now. Okay, so you know Team Dog developed into this whole program where I go in and talk to students and I share my life story and it's you know the Team Dog Bobby Dog story, you know. Um, it all started when the internet first burst on the scene. Uh, I had a company put on my website, some team dog, uh, characters in their different careers. We used, uh, firemen, police, and then of course all the different sports. So we made these coloring sheets where they could be printed out and a teacher here on Long Island found the website, had her students, it was, I believe, a third grade students, and was Sachem. They printed out every dog character and all the students colored them in. And then they made a collage. Wow. And uh, th thanks to the internet, this teacher reached out for me and said, would you come in and introduce yourself and talk to my students about what these dog characters represent because they love your team dog characters. I'm like, sure, I could do that. So bring me through the whole creation and and what exactly these characters uh, are. Well, you know, Bobby Dog was the first character that I created. And then I put Bobby Dog in every scenario, always with the idea of making an animated cartoon series based on the Team Dog world. So it was so easy for me with four brothers and three sisters, I instantly have seven more characters to develop. And using their personalities and everyone's career, what they bring, my brother Andy is a, a super custom wood building uh, master of wood building and a fantastic singer songwriter so I put him into my world of team dog with his traits and then my brother Roy with his and my brother John with his and my sister Roberta and my sister Anna. I could go on with my whole family and all these characters came to light one of the biggest characters in team dog next to me now is actually my partner coach Ed <laughs> and we he became late into Team Dog World because we became friends after I started my Team Dog journey. But without him, I would have never journeyed into the world of children's books and a school program and, and what we do today. We do this together today. And wow. Coach Ed and I met a long time ago when my daughter was three, four, five years old. She was learning how to skate. And it used to be called, I think, uh, Sports Sports Plus. Sports. It was uh, by the mall. Yes, Sports Plus. Right. So they, it's not even there anymore. But they learned to skate there. And his son, Stephen, was also learning to skate. And we did not know each other. And each week, we would bring our children. They would skate, and we would stand ten feet apart, and just watch our kids. Wow. And wow. you know, if you talk to my partner, coach, he'll he'll say, you know, I I looked at him. And I saw his Team Dog logo. And I like that logo. So I one day, you know, on the third or fourth time, I decided I'm going to introduce myself. Wow. And he came over and said, hey, I, I, my name is Ed. And what is that on your shirt? I love that. And I'm like, oh, it's Team Dog. I created Team Dog. And I told my story. And we became very friendly. And within, I would say within 30 days, him and I were on the phone every day talking about because he shares the same passion about, we both feel this, we need better role models for our kids to grow up and emulate today. Mm. Not the ones that they do emulate. I mean, there are sports figures that are great role models and there are super Hollywood superstars that are great role models, but not all of them are. It doesn't it doesn't necessarily need to be a uh, a celebrity, uh, an actor, a great athlete. It could be it could be anybody that could be a great role model. Uh, see, to me and, and, and Coach Ed, we believe that the celebrity is the person who is actually that great role model. And I, when it comes to being a role model, I term those people everyday heroes because every day they try to show people the right way to do things. Okay, let's go back in time. Uh, <laughs> let's go back in time when you were growing up. And then we'll come to today. Okay. Your heroes, your role models as a kid growing up, one and two, who were they? Mom and dad. Awesome. And today? Mom and dad. Wow. And my brothers and my sisters. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I'm a real believer of family. You, you know, you fan, listen, I have a lot of friends and I'm fortunate to have a lot of friends. And your, your friends and your family, those are your everyday heroes. And this is what I talk about to our kids. Those are your everyday heroes in your life because they can help you 
achieve far better than you can do by yourself. Okay. Mom and dad, you love them? Love them, miss and them. They're, they're both gone, yes. Yeah, I miss my dad too. Uh, my mom's still alive, but dad uh, passed away in 2000. Uh, I miss him dearly. Yes. My father was a great man, great man, loved him dearly. Um, you do have to tell me, being a baseball fan, <laughs> two or three greatest baseball players back in your youth growing up. <clears throat> I was a big fan of Thurman Munson. Wow. Yeah, rest in peace. Wow. Right? Um, a real big fan of his and his tenacity. Like he was a go getter. He was really, he played hard nosed ball, you know? So I really loved him. Of course, I, I'm, I'm a Yankee fan. So you're going to hear Yankee names, but I mean, to me, I, not that I ever got to see Lou Gehrig play or Babe Ruth play or even Mickey Mantle. I don't remember playing just their stories about, you know, what they brought as players and as people. I mean, there was so many things to research and I started to research all these Yankees. I, I cannot believe just how good they were on the ball field. And then of course, when you bring their personality up front, there were some really good role models. I mean, Lou Gehrig to me was probably one of, one of the better role models that's a sports figure could be. And I would to date bring Cal Ripken Jr. Wow. As wow. his equal type, not because he broke that record, but because he is, you know, a great role model. He is, in my opinion, he is integrity and fair and, you know, a respectful player and person in life. Great, great. So Thurman Munson, uh, Lou Gehrig, and Cal Ripken. Cal Ripken Jr. How about uh, the players today? Do you know, uh, I love David Wright. I believe that he is a great role model and he approached the game with a lot of respect for everybody. And I really love when a player shows that they can be respectful. I mean, we're all competitive. We all want to win. You know what I'm shocked? What? You're a huge, huge Yankee fan. <laughs> yes, I am. And and the first player you mentioned for this generation today is a New York Met, David Wright. Well, you know, Jeter's going to be right behind him. <laughs> <laughs> so you put you put Jeter second to Wright. No, I put I put them in the same on the same level playing field. Obviously, Derek Jeter was amazing both as a player and as a person. You know, it. There's not too much you could say that hasn't already been said about Derek Jeter. <laughs> But in my opinion, what a great ball player he was. And he, his approach and his respect for everybody shown on the field and in person is pretty amazing. Okay. Who do you consider, and I'll tell you who I do, who do you consider the past 20 years in the game of baseball the single most valuable player in the game of baseball over the last 20 years? It would have to be Derek Jeter. Interesting. Interesting. Close. That's close. <laughs> I mean, I love Jeter. He was one of the greatest, if not. But I consider that the, the most valuable player in baseball, and especially to the New York Yankees, their championship, was Mariano Rivera. Mariano Rivera is awesome. If you look at how the game of baseball has changed and that the relief, the ninth inning pitcher, the relief pitcher, has became become such a such a valuable um, point in a game that he was he was ninety eight ninety nine percent perfect and there's never been you know a lot of times over the years with relief pitches isn't it true that you when it comes to the ninth inning you're holding your breath when someone comes in oh absolutely you know it's absolutely. like all or nothing uh, so I I consider whenever that discussion comes up with me who uh, who do you consider the most valuable player over the last twenty years. In the game of baseball, he, he was right there with the New York Yankees. And the specialty that that ninth inning of relief, I mean, New Yorkers, I'll never forget with uh, my son Jared, how many how many World Series and playoff games we went to. And fans would be sitting with us in Yankee Stadium and you, they'd be saying to us, I couldn't work all day. I'm waiting for... <laughs> this jog in from the bullpen and hearing Metallica and hear and watching Mariano Rivera run in from the outfield to take his position was probably goosebumps. The most electrifying time ever that I've seen in, in the game of sports. I, I would have to agree with you 100% on that. He definitely changed 
the position of uh, you know closer in the game of baseball. There's no two ways about that. Boy, you and I are going to come back and do many shows on baseball, our love for baseball, because of uh, some great history. And, uh, you know, we got to do a little bit of NBA, too. You got to, you got you know, I've got my I'll son. I brush up my on my basketball. There, <laughs> my son there works at the National Basketball Association. Uh, he's becoming a superstar over there in the executive offices. So uh, it can't be all baseball that we talk about on this show. But uh, let's get back to <laughs> let's get back to Bobby Dog. All the great stuff. I mean, you are my hero, Bobby. Thank you so much. You Dave. are my hero. It's not too many times that uh, I meet people, uh, and especially after their careers. I mean, retired as a police officer, and that every day, you know, you've got your own family to take care of. You got children, and uh, and. Uh, you know that you're every every day in your life you're giving back to uh youth and children in this in this community and uh, i want you to just go in a little bit more about uh tell tell my audience you know really exactly what you're what you're doing every day and it's not diff it's I, I assume it's very difficult to to get clearance to get into the schools to be able to do what you're doing well, you know, being in the schools now, I am actually listed in the BOCES uh, Arts and Ed program. So they have a book of, you know, what they, they would call presenters. And you can go to this book and as a school, pick a presenter to come in and present to your students. And uh, so being listed in that book, that gives me the clearance to come in. You know, um, the show's heard all over the world. Why don't you just be a little bit more clear on what this BOCES is and, and, and well, BOCES, how, di how difficult it is to get clearance, to be able to, you know, not everybody uh, is allowed to go into, especially in today's world. Yes, today's Security, world, the doors are locked. in a different world, the doors are locked. So <laughs> yeah. how, I'm sure it's not just because you're a retired police officer. I, I do, I have to tell you, I believe that being a retired police officer has a lot to do with it. Now, you know, my Team Dog program and what I represent has all been word of mouth of, of course with the internet you know and social media i am now starting to get all over the country but i'm i'm really basically grassroots you know local um long island doing what i'm doing and just through word of mouth you know when teachers see my presentation and they like what i do and they feel it's important they will pass that along and just from them telling their friends and different you know principals and so on I get the call and say, so we heard you have a program. How's it work? And, you know, then I tell them how it works, how I can come in. I mean, we have children's books and our children's books are basically our program. It's a story about what children are going to go through in their life. It's, it will touch topics. I have Trevor's bully problem. That's one book. I have a uh, team dog. It's all about respect where the young pup is a middle school pup and he gets a homework assignment. Wow. When he goes home to find out what respect is. So what does he do? He goes to all his everyday heroes, his family, his uncles, his friends, his cousin, and he asks them all what they think respect is. Now, this is a book that children can read. And if they can't, if they're not reading, you know, able, they're young, because I'm actually in preschool, doing preschool as well. As a parent, you read the book, your child will look at the pictures and they will be, you know, they will love the cartoon dog characters. So it will keep their attention and you'll talk about a very important subject that's going to affect their life, if not right now, but in the future. Hmm. Wow. So I call that a read out loud book where you come in, you read it out loud to your children and you share it, the story, and it helps to open the communication about important things such as being respectful to yourself and others and what it actually means. So briefly, briefly run through exactly how you present to a school assembly. Okay, well, uh, my partner, Coach Ed and I, now Coach Ed is another cartoon dog, is in, in our cartoon world. How did you, before, <laughs> before you even finish, how did, how did you and Ed meet? Uh, Coach Ed and I met while our kids were ice skating. He came over and said hello to me, and we became very close friends from that point on. And we share the same passion to make a difference in the world. And wow. of course, our kids, to be there for our kids. So I, I see that right away with him. And So he comes to the assembly with you? He is part of that assembly. Okay, he so let's of, let's hear more about this assembly. All right, so when we walk into the assembly, here's what you'll get. The, the students will sit down. There'll be cartoon dog character cutouts behind us, along with our books and big giant poster about everyday heroes and uh, all, the, all the dog characters around this sign of a town that we created called pause town so when we introduce ourselves i will introduce myself as bobby dog 
and go over some ground rules with the students about how this program is going to work and what we're going to talk about. And then I will introduce Coach Ed. And then Coach Ed will walk up and he will say hello to the students. And then he will start by asking the students who likes cartoons. Now, every student likes cartoons. So the students will raise their hands and he will talk to the students about what cartoons do you like? So it's an interactive discussion. And that's one of the most important things here. It's an interactive discussion where the students get to share their thoughts as we tell our story. It's very, very... Now, these, these assemblies are what age group of, uh, of students? We've done, I've done from preschool all the way to fifth grade. Our, what I would call our perfect grade level is third and fourth graders because they have enough uh, living time to interact and share with what's going on in their world. So, but we've done it all from preschool to fifth grade level. Now, when we do have the students in front of us, Coach Ed will ask who likes cartoons, they'll share their favorite cartoons. And if they don't bring up a superhero, Coach Ed will bring up hit one of his favorite cartoons, which would say Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, right? All these superheroes. So we ask the kids, why are they called superheroes? And the students will say, well, they have superpowers. Hmm. What do they do with those superpowers? Well, they protect people and they save the world. That is correct. See, our cartoon dog characters, they are not superheroes. They're what we call an everyday hero. Does anybody know what an everyday hero is? All the kids raise their hands. Wow, wow. Does anybody know an everyday hero maybe in your neighborhood? And we'll let every student tell us, you know, whether it would be the police officer, the fireman, the doctor, the mailman. And obviously you're like you are here in the studio, you're in a, a, a police uniform. Uh... Right, I, uh, the team dog uniform I wear is a police uniform with all my team dog because Bobby Dog is a police officer in the town of Town. Well, if you want to see, uh, until this show goes uh, video in the near future, uh, <laughs> if anyone wants to see uh, Bobby Dog, Robert Fortier, uh, just go to the Dean Blackman uh, Instagram page and you'll see, uh, you'll see a picture. Oh, very cool. Very cool. So these assemblies must be very cool. The, you know what? They are so much fun because we love what we do. Both Coach Ann and I live what we talk about every day. So it's so easy for me to share my story because it's my story. And, and then I have Ed to do it with me, you know? So he will get all the students to know what an everyday hero is, right to the point where he says, because they never think of themselves as an everyday hero, or not very often. But he brings them to think of themselves because he'll get the, how about sitting right here because we'll talk about teachers as heroes. The principal is very popular to be a hero to our kids. And that's awesome things that you want to hear your children think as a hero would be, right? After you, after you have these assemblies, uh, I assume these kids go home at night and uh, you must be getting some uh, interesting uh, accolades of uh, letters and emails I that, do, are, I that, are coming, I that are coming in from parents. I get some great... I, my feedback, I save all my feedback because I've gotten some great letters. Um, Students have actually written to me and they continue to write to me and there's places on my site where they can download, you know, pictures of the dog and color them in or share their stories, you know, with me. You mentioned uh, how to how to see all these uh, letters and uh, all these collateral materials and all the supplies that you're doing and what exactly you're doing in the schools. Why don't you just share with the audience uh, how they get in contact with you, any schools that want to get in contact with you, uh, the public, um, exactly how they could reach you, how these, how these materials even outside the school systems can be, uh, can be purchased even. Well, we have a team dog website and that's team dog with dog spelled D A W G team dog.com. We also have team dog on Facebook and on my dot com website, I have a store where you can actually click on there to see the books. You can purchase books. You can also get our books in Barnes and Noble. You go in and order those books. Um, but on my website, you can actually find all the different things that you need to find about our program. Uh, there's phone numbers. You can reach me on my phone number there or through email, bobby at teamdog.com. Um, and that's, again, bobby at teamdog, D-A-W-G dot com. Excellent, excellent. I've got to ask you um, this uh, this program that you do uh, with the kids. Um, are you considered a anti bully program? 
You know, that's funny because they term me that many, often they ask us, are we an anti-bully program? Now, uh, first of all, we are not a bully program. We will discuss it and we will talk about, you know, the term bully and of course what a bully is, but we are not a bully program. And we don't like to use the word anti in anything because it has such a negative uh, notion when you say that word anti, I'm anti this, I'm anti that. I, I like to focus on the positive of things. And it's the same thing when we talk about bullying. You know, when I'm talking to the students, I could share with you. I take away the word bully and I say, guys, what is right and what is wrong? When you're making fun of somebody, is that right or wrong? Well, it's wrong. Okay, you got that. Um, if somebody calls somebody names, is that right or wrong? No. If somebody treats somebody disrespectful, it's all wrong, right? But you want to term it as being bullied, but you're not always being bullied because people have the right to maybe, I, I don't know you, so I'm not going to be your friend. That's You're not being bullied. They have that right to make that decision. But pe kids specifically will say I'm being bullied because right now it's a broad paintbrush for everything that's wrong in the world is I'm being bullied or you're a bully. And that's just not true. So to get kids to realize, forget about the word bully and let's just be right or wrong. And if we could be right. I assume that uh, one of the many things that kids at this age are dealing with that bullying has to be right up there. Uh, oh, I was going to say besides bullying, what else is most prevalent at this age group? Well, you know, peer pressure and being bullied is huge for kids, and it starts very young. It starts very young. But there are so many things that can go wrong, and what I try to do and what Coach Ed and I both try to do is to bring it to the students, this very important message. If you have a problem, nobody can help you with that problem if we don't know about it. So communication is one of the biggest components of Team Dog in our books, in our workshops, in our discussions, we always talk about the importance of communicating anything. And no problem is too big and no problem is too small And to communicate to anybody. And who do we want to go to when we have a problem? We say, go to your everyday heroes in your life. Mom, dad, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, teacher, principal. These are the people you see every day. And these are the people you could talk to every day if you have a problem. Is there a particular hero that uh, this, uh, this age group of kids, uh, that's very common as far as a uh, hero's names that get mentioned uh, from uh, the kids today? You know, the kids today, they, they are amazing. They, most kids talk about their parents as heroes and that's, you know, it makes me smile. I'm smiling right now because that, if you have a hero for a parent, you're going to go very far in life and things are going to be a lot smoother for you in life. But, Everybody's family is different, and everybody has a different makeup of family, and some kids don't even have parents. So the important thing for them to know is that there's people for them. There are people that they can go to that will help them, and that's pretty much what our discussion is throughout our program. You know, you mentioned uh, heroes. We're going. Th I, I promised that we weren't going to talk politics on this show, but the only reason I'm bringing it up is we're going through an unprecedented uh, election period with uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. I mean, the likes of that we've never seen ever before, might not ever see ever again, that uh, are you hearing from uh, children of this age range? Uh, are they listening to what, uh, what they hearing uh, either uh, uh, on the TV, commercials, uh, ads, uh, from their parents in the house, from uh, family members. Uh, what, uh, what, what's the feedback? What are you hearing in regard to uh, uh, the, this election with kids? Well, I believe that most of the kids today are just talking about what they hear at home, you know, between their family, friends, and see on TV. And it's as divided as we are as adults. You know, and but of course, I think that the students will take the side of their parents for the most part. So what you see in school is what we go through as adults when you start going into the arena of politics right. and who you like and why you like them or who you don't like and why you don't like them. They they are actually just mimicking what they see at home. Yeah, well, you're seeing uh, and like, it is you're seeing divided. like never before the name calling that's going on uh in this uh, campaign that uh, the kids, uh, it's got to be amazing, the young kids, uh, what they're hearing. 
at the very beginning of this campaign, as I listened to like all, everyone who was trying to get on the ticket, there was so much disrespect going on that I actually just wrote, I'm, I very rarely get involved in politics. I wrote just a post for my, the people that know me and say, I really, all I ask, if you're going to make America great again, you got to make America respectful again. Right, right. And that's that has to be done in order for us to be that great America that we are. Well, it's it's great that someone like you is in the schools doing what you're doing with today's youth because today's youth need someone like you because they're faced with quite a challenging future in this world like we've never seen before. That is so true. So that's why you're my hero. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's Dean. why Thank you're you. my hero. But you've got some great, uh, great materials here for the kids. All these books, Team Dog books, uh, just uh, remarkable. Thank you so much. Hey, the most important thing is the message, right? Respect message. I we Our program is called Respect. You give it, you get it. It's a very simple message, right? But not very many people get it <laughs> or model it, I should say. So, and that's, I think that's one of the most important things we could teach anybody, not just, I think there's a few parents or adults that can read my respect book and may, maybe be reminded about what being respectful really is. You know, you, you mentioned one of your brothers, uh, and, uh, out of your uh, sisters and brothers, the only one that I've gotten a chance to meet is your brother, Roy. And, uh, I got to meet Roy because he's uh, married to uh, one of the owners, one of the founding uh, owners of Maureen's Kitchen. Ah, Maureen's Kitchen. Great food, as in you know. Smithtown, Maureen's Kitchen. Am I correct? It was at Nesconsin. No, that, that's Smithtown. That's Smithtown. I believe yeah. that's Smithtown. And uh, uh, Maureen's kitchen, kitchen goes back uh, probably uh, maybe as far back as the, the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> <laughs> when mom and dad started Maureen's Kitchen. It's a very famous restaurant. It's There's very not too many famous. people that don't know about very it throughout famous. the country. And I'm telling you, this plug I'm giving to Maureen's <laughs> Kitchen, uh, it better help uh, Sharon and I not to wait uh, for that hour uh, line, uh, long wait that we have to, that Christine and uh, and her brother Kevin better be listening to the show, that uh, this plug I'm giving them, that uh, <laughs> I better not have to wait anymore on online anymore. But it is uh, been known for how many years, Maureen's Kitchen? Uh, uh, listen, I think it's got to be 30 years that uh, that I'm aware of them. We used to go. We used to go to eat at Maureen's Kitchen when it was a little shack on the side of the road, and they did such a great job with that place. They really did. But do your brother Roy, great guy, great, great uh, brother. I met him at the car wash first time. It, at Touch a class car wash. You know, my brother. That's Roy, where I met. We were on a bench, what? and uh, we started talking. And next thing you know, uh, you know, we bring up uh, Maureen's Kitchen. He says he's married to Christine, and uh, I'll never forget the uh, first thing that came to mind is I love uh, Christine's brother, Kevin. Great guy. But, uh, <laughs> you know, never... Kevin played ball with me, actually, he... He... years ago. He was a very good ball player. You know, you shake Kevin's hand. It's uh, one of the biggest hands I've ever shook. Uh, I compare him to another great uh, Hall of Fame baseball friend of mine, Orlando Cepeda, who paid, played for the San Francisco Giants, St. Louis Cardinals, wow. uh, the baby bull. When he went to the Cardinals, his nickname was Cha-Cha because he loved music. But uh, at Aponce, Puerto Rico, Orlando was one of the greatest, greatest Dominican first baseman uh, uh, Latin ball players that uh, played from out of Puerto Rico. Wow. So, uh, but Kevin, I was talking to your brother Roy, and I said, you know, I go to this Maureen's kitchen. He says he's married to Christine. And uh, I said, you know, her brother Kevin, you know, every time I eat there, uh, as I'm leaving, Kevin shakes my hand and he says, Dean, I'm going to call you up. We'll go to dinner. We'll have a drink. And your brother Roy says to me, you know how many hundreds of people he says that to a day? <laughs> <laughs> he's still he's still a sweet guy i love him now that is funny okay i like his sister christine but uh you guys must uh do you get a discount when you go there there is no discount when you go there <laughs> hey Dean, i will tell you when i go there i wait in line just like you huh? i wait in line just like you to well sit down i just want to <laughs> people all over the world i just want to say this this place uh maureen's kitchen and they're only open for breakfast and for lunch they're not open for dinner because the family wants to have some family time otherwise they'd be packed for dinner if they stayed open their food is but amazing. it is the most you know there's such a thing as eggs and pancakes and waffles uh, for breakfast but there's nothing like it how they make it at maureen's kitchen 
No, I would give them that. I'm more of a lunch guy. I'm more of a lunch guy at Maureen's. Uh, they make the best chicken salad in the world that I've <laughs> ever had. Not in the country. Chicken salad in the world, the best I've, I've ever met. That, that is I've some statement. It's awesome. awesome. That is some statement. But I'm expecting after this show, uh, getting some pull from you, your brother Roy, and uh, the plug I'm giving these guys over at Maureen's, that I'm expecting no more hour waits for me uh, on, online anymore. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, I, I don't know if there's anything else that we haven't covered in your program that you'd like to that you'd like to talk about that we haven't covered. Uh, I would like to just add that through what we've done over the past 30 years on our website, teamdog.com, we celebrate everyday heroes in our community. Now, our focus is on our youth. So when kids are doing great things, we like to t share their story with everybody. But being that I'm a retired police officer and I have a very big soft spot for first responders and uh, all those people who are truly heroes every day when they go to work, um, and we share their story, and we actually have an award, which is a hero award, and we, we had uh, our last book signing at Barnes & Noble here in Lake Grove, we actually brought in five of our heroes and presented them with medals. All these kids wow. who did great things awesome. in their community. And it wasn't just Long Island. We had uh, a, a hero from New Jersey come. And when she spoke, everybody was just silent. She was awesome. So we love to bring this to the forefront, all the positive to the forefront. And I'd like to leave it on one of the newest creations that I'm very proud of is that I've created the Team Dog Sportsmanship Award. And we award this sportsmanship award to a Long Island athlete who is not just a great you know, athlete playing in a sport that they're playing in, but is a great person. Wow, wow. And has the ability to be a leader because of their respect for themselves and others. And we started this, and in the last two years, we've given out uh, two awards to two Long Island um, athletes, and I'm so proud of that. And now it's grown to we we actually are going to give this award to a pro athlete, which if you were on my um, my Facebook page, you would see that it was um, the umpire and Mr. Rizzo from the Cubs. Wow! Did you catch that action? When they mic'd up the umpire and he had started to walk to first on what he thought was a ball four. And he was halfway down the line when the ump called the strike. And then when next time he returned to at bat, the catcher went to talk to the pitcher. Wow. Which gave the umpire and Rizzo a few moments. And both of them were so respectful. I was taken back and I have to recognize these two as great sportsmanship for what they stated and you know you, you know they don't think that they're mic'd up and anyone's listening wow. and he apologized to the umpire for he what he said i wasn't trying to show you up I, I didn't i thought it was a bull and the umpire said no you're a good guy just the fact that you even saying apologizing shows that you're a good guy we're good hmm. and i i got goosebumps just telling you that story because to me that is what we want to represent us for our kids, don't you well, think? Absolutely, absolutely. So those two are going to be getting the next Team Dog Sportsmanship Award. I think it's great. That's a great that you do that. I love it. It's so, my... You know, I just want to let you know that uh, if uh, I and uh, the show, the Dean Blackman Show, in any way could uh, uh, help you and aid you uh, as you do Team Dog with all the schools, um, please, um, any way that I could help. Well, I, I appreciate uh, that. I, and, today, I feel like it's the start of a really good friendship, buddy. Any, Absolutely. Any way that the show, that I could uh, get the word out, um, you know, I assume uh, you want to take this beyond Long Island and you want to take it across the country one day. And if I could ever help you through the show get that message out, um, please ask. And you're welcome to come back. Uh, I would love to come You're back. You're welcome to come back anytime you want. You've been a, a terrific uh, guest. And uh, um, so far, all these children and all these families that you touch and the schools 
I'm very fortunate to have you. Well, thank you. you. You make it so comfortable here. Like, I feel like we've been hanging out together, not on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> and that's very, that's important. That's pretty special. It to make hear somebody feel that. at ease, you know? You know why? It's, uh, I've never had, uh, it's been a long time since I've had this fun. And I love to talk with people. I love to interact with people. And, uh, this uh, the show gives me an opportunity to do that every day and to speak to people all across the world that we're talking to. Well, you can tell that you have a passion for you know meeting people and you know, you enjoy what you do, and that's the most important thing in life. But uh, the great thing you're doing with kids every day, if I could help you in any way with the show to get to get your message out there, all you gotta do is ask me. Thank you very much. So, a baseball question. <laughs> Who's going to win the World Series and in how many games? Well, I'm hoping it's the Cubs, but I think it's going to go seven. I okay. think it will go seven because they, they're they both two great teams. I don't think anybody's going to go quietly. So you're picking the Cubs? I'm picking the Cubs. Okay. The Cubs, I'm you, a fan. You want to know something? I'm hoping for the Cubs, too. I, oh, very good. I think if I'm correct, once again, this is a trivia question, but if I'm correct, it might be 108 years since the Chicago Cubs wow. won the World Series. Wow. So once again, I want to thank you very much for being a guest on the show. And uh, we want to hear from all our listeners. Listeners can reach out to us with the free text number for U.S. residents. It's 631-372-8849. It's 631-372-8849. We'd love to hear from all of you. Include your name and location, and we will mention you on the show. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and hit the subscribe button on the show's YouTube channel. If you would like to leave a comment, use the box below. If you'd like to share your story, ideas, and be a guest on the show, go to deanbleckman.com and email me directly. I would like to thank all my listeners for being with us today. From all of us at The Dean Blackman Show, have a great day. You've been listening to The Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island, New York. From all of us here, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. We look forward to hearing your comments via Facebook, Twitter, Skype, and email. And don't forget, you can visit the webpage anytime for the up-and-coming guest list. From all of us here, have a good evening.